let us pray dear father we as church family we gathered here to praise you and adore you lord we thank you for all the blessings and guidance that you shower on us every day and lord as we are closing to the end of the year we thank you for all the guidance we thank you for all the wisdom we thank you for all the blessings that you shower on us all through this year lord we thank you and adore you we need your presence in this worship service you be with us in our praisings and prayers we submit this worship time in your mighty hands in jesus name we pray amen opening him from church hymnal hymn number 41 hark the herald angels sing glory to the new born king church hymnal hymn number 41 song of adoration from songs of praise 57 in his time in his time he makes all things beautiful in his time songs of praise 57 
Let us continue to worship God. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace be among those whom He favors. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall sing forth Your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise be to you, O God, the Father, who created all things by your power and wisdom, and loved the world so as to give your Son to be our Savior. Praise be to you, O God, the Son, who was made human like us in all things except sin. and was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification praise be to you o god the holy spirit who does lead us into all truth and thus shed abroad the love of god in our hearts all praise and glory be to you o god father son and holy spirit forever and ever amen if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our treacheries. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one in every respect has been tested as you are yet without sin. Let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Let us say together, Almighty and most merciful God, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done, and we have done those things which we should not have done. And there is no health in us. but you o lord have mercy upon us miserable offenders spare them o god who confess their faults restore them that are penitent according to your promises declared to human kind in christ jesus our lord and grant o most merciful god for his sake that we may hereafter live a godly righteous and just life to the glory of your holy name amen May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue to pray today's collect. First Sunday after Christmas, Family Sunday. God, the author of all families, from whom every family in heaven and on earth receives its true name grant us and our families the wisdom to decide to serve you alone so that we would remain as members of the household of your son jesus christ who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forevermore amen let us all sing from songs of praise 224 all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give after the song pastoral prayer will be offered songs of praise 224 
returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength for when i am weak then i am strong almighty god we thank you and praise you for the life and the protection and providence this whole year you have given us strength in weakness and healing and restoration at the time of need for oh god thank you for the family you have given unto us where we enjoy life cherish your greatness and grow in faith and love as a family we have hope in you and share the hope to the society o oh lord in our family where we grow up in christian nature through thy word o oh lord and in the christian values o oh master as a family we experience the kingdom values and promote them to our neighbors o oh lord we are grateful for you for our children and our great grandchildren and grandchildren o oh lord they are the gifts from you thank you for the fellowship and the love and the friendship we are enjoying with them and as a family we worship you o lord we praise you for our church st john's family where we have friendship and fellowship and as a body we are witnessing in the world o lord and worshiping you together o lord accept our worship and thanksgiving almighty thank you for you've been given us an opportunity to show the light in this world and be salt in this world o lord we pray for our trichitanjal church of south india diocese our bishop bishop amma and his family members especially for the children o lord and we pray for all the pastors mission workers and all the people those who work in our institutions the institution heads the lay leaders of our church the believers and their family o lord protect them continually thank you for protecting all of us in this covid-19 situation so o god amidst calamities and natural disasters you've been protecting us all along we are very much grateful and thankful to you for that o lord we pray for the poor and needy homeless people living in streets and for their needs to be met and to be taken care of o lord thank you for using us as a helping hands for you o god we pray for the sick people among us and the sick in this society also o lord we pray for the senior citizens in our congregation elders in our family o lord thank you for helping us to help them and we pray for the people those who are especially in the geriatric care give them the strength which is needed o lord give all of us the healing touch and feel your healing touch o lord and strengthen us we pray for the medical personnel and the health workers all over this globe who work tirelessly and sacrificially for the sake of the people we pray for all the emergency service workers provide them the protection they are in need o lord we pray for the mission workers who serve you and all the ngos who work among the poor and the needy o lord we pray for all the missional institutions all over the globe o lord bless all of them provide them their needs amidst this covid-19 situation Almighty God 
bless all the members of St. John's family, especially those who are here in this sanctuary, O Lord. Bless all of them. Fulfill all their needs, O God. Especially we pray for the people, those who are standing in their pews and knelt down and asking your pardon and your strength, O Lord. Give them their needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Today's lessons will be read now. Today's first lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. Revelation chapter 3, beginning to read from verse 14. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. I know your works, you are e neither cold nor hot, would that you were either cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne as I also conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here ends the first lesson. Thanks be to God. taken from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses from 31 to 35. Mark, chapter 3, 31 to 35. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my brothers and my brothers? Who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Who, whoever does God's will is my mother and my brother and sister and mother. Here is the reading. Thanks be to God. to sermon let us sing from church hymnal hymn number 169 O God of Bethel by whose hand thy people still are fed after the song Reverend David Kuzazaya will share God's message with us church hymnal hymn number 169 
gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we could gather this morning in your holy name to worship you, to adore you, to sing praises unto you, and above all, to glorify your holy name. Father God, we do thank you that you have given us your word which is a lamp to our path and a light to our feet. Even as we meditate upon your word, Father God, speak to us so that we might listen to you, obey your voice, and receive blessings from you. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, what a privilege my wife and I have this morning to be with you in our worship and very specially to share the Word of God. May I grab this opportunity to thank uh, our dear pastor and the clerical secretary of our diocese, Reverend Sudarshan, for giving me this beautiful opportunity. Thank you. And I also thank uh, Brother Reverend Inian, Reverend Lawrence Joseph, who are my friends, who have also given me this wonderful opportunity. And I greet you once again, all of you, in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As per the lectionary of the Church of South India, the subject given for our meditation this morning is family, Bible, uh, Family Sunday. So I have chosen a verse from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Here am I, I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. A mother took her little son, who is only four years old, from the village to the nearby town to purchase articles. When she went along with her son to the village, from the village to the town, there was a huge crowd in the bazaar. It was all because of a local festival that was celebrated by all the members of the town. As they were walking along the road, she saw a shop and went there along with her son to buy certain articles for the family. As she was indulging herself in the purchase, she suddenly turned behind and looked for her son. He was not there. He was missing. Where was he gone? She was lamenting, she was shouting, and she was grieving. And she was at the peak of her voice. Oh, I have lost my son. A police who was standing nearby came nearer to her and said, What's happening? What's your problem? She said, I brought my four-year-old son, and as I was doing my purchase, he was missing. I am in a desperate situation. Can you help me? The policeman came there and uh, took her to an elevated place, which is the watchtower, and asked her to stand in the watchtower and handed over a binocular so that she could peep into the binocular and was looking at the crowd. And suddenly she was beaming with joy. Oh, my son is closer to me 
he is standing along with me he is standing just in front of me i am really happy i am rejoicing my son is just standing before me the policeman said no madam look at the binocular and give it back to me and he peeped through the binocular and saw the son standing in a far away place and uh, the policeman said i'll go and bring him to you he went along with the crowd and uh, picked up the boy and brought him to the mother and uh, she embraced his son and they were rejoicing dearly beloved this is christmas god is far beyond the human reach mankind cannot peep into heaven we cannot know god we cannot comprehend god we do not know who he is we do not know the qualities and the characteristics of god but thank god there was a binocular and uh, god provided it for each and every one of us and he brought his son jesus closer to us and we are rejoicing today because of the manger where jesus was born in the midst of the cattle feed when we look at jesus we know god is a god of love when we look at jesus we know god is a god of forgiveness when we look at jesus god is a god of kindness when we look at jesus god is a healer when we look at jesus god is the savior when we look at jesus god is the redeemer thank god that we could celebrate with joy and jubilation because jesus was born and god has come closer to us and god is dwelling among us and god is with us we could all celebrate in the midst of all chaos and confusion loss sorrow and suffering god is with us but dearly beloved i want to ask you a question to you and to myself where was jesus in the midst of all the celebration where was jesus in the midst of all our decorations where was jesus in the midst of all the preparation of all the delicacies that we enjoyed was he in the center of all our celebration was he in the center and head of our family was he indulging himself in all our activities and in all our actions in the family you know what the bible says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hears my voice and opens the door i will come in it is very unfortunate the bible says that he was standing outside of the door door of the church door of the family door of our lives it is all because we have rejected him we have given priority to what is not important what is not prominent in our life daily beloved in the family do we give priority to the kingdom of god when the pastor prayed he prayed for the kingdom values i just want to share three things fix your values secondly fasten your vesture and thirdly focus your vision fix your values in the family secondly fasten your vesture 
in the family and thirdly focus your vision values vesture and thirdly vision see there is a small circle which is the family the nuclear family there is a larger circle which is the church and it is also a family st john's is a family we quite often use the word john's family and then the largest circle which is the society in which we live and now i want to talk about the larger family st john's family the church because jesus here talks about the church first three chapters of the book of revelation are very important it is all because he talks about seven churches when he talks and addresses to the seven churches he says seven things in every church the first one is the greeting and the second one is the title and the third one is a statement and the fourth one is a criticism and the fifth one is a warning and the sixth one is an advice and the seventh one is a promise in every church you will find seven things very beautifully interwoven very significantly conveyed to the people of god take for example the church at laodicea look at uh, verse 14 chapter 3 of book the book of revelation to the angel of the church this is the greeting secondly there is a title for jesus there is a name of jesus look at the name these are the words of the amen jesus is called the amen and he gives a lovely description of this amen the faithful and the true witness and the ruler of god's creation this is the title and the third one the statement the statement begins with the word in verse 15 i know i know in all the seven churches jesus the angel of the lord uses the word i know i know you this is the third one look at the fourth one the criticism in the verse 16 you are lukewarm you are neither hot nor cold that is the criticism the fourth one look at the fifth one in the same verse i am about to spit you out of my mouth i will spew you out i will vomit you that is the warning given and the sixth one is the advice or the exhortation that we find in verse 19 the latter part of verse 19 so be earnest and repent that is the advice given to the family of god that is the advice given to the people of god that is the exhortation that is described to god's flock repent and the final one the seventh one is the promise that we find in verse 21 to him who overcomes i will give the right to sit with me on my throne i will give the right to sit with me on my throne i will give the privilege of being in my presence sitting next to me in the kingdom of god that is the promise if you read the seven verses you will find these seven things we don't have time to go into all the explanations and the descriptions i just want to talk about the town in laodicea the uh, city by the name laodicea where there were a lot of families christian families and the significance of these families 
are very interesting. Family with full of dollars. Every family was rich. They had plenty of wealth. They have amassed properties. Families with dollars. Secondly, the families lived in Laodicea where with dresses, plenty of garments. When they opened the wardrobe, they could find variety of garments, all costly clothing that were displayed once with they opened the almara. Families with dollars, families with dresses, and families with doctors. They were all educated people. They were members of medical community. They were all learned people. They were doctors. They were indulging themselves in medical profession. Dearly beloved, it was a wealthy city. It was a city with textile industry, garment industry, and it was a medical center, banking center, textile center, and the medical center. Why? It is all because they were exporting a very special eye ointment to the world for others to have a vision to others for their cure in their eye ailment. That was a popular city. Extra historical documents say a few names of very famous and popular uh, doctors. We don't have time to go into the names of all these doctors. They were flowing with dollars and dress and uh, doctors. Dearly beloved, think about our families. Think about our St. John's family. Don't we have dollars? Don't we have uh, dresses, plenty of dresses? Don't we have uh, doctors in our family? who were highly placed in the society, reputed people in our families, in our own families, they are all very good. But the Lord says, where is your priority? Whom do you give precedence in your personal life, in your family life? That is what is Jesus asking the people, the church of God, the families of God, in Laodicea. Look at uh, the words of Jesus. Very powerful. He says, Hey, people of Laodicea, families of Laodicea, you are wretched. You are pitiful. Your position is deplorable. Your place in the society is despicable. That is what Jesus says. Look at this verse uh, in uh, 17. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched and you are pitiful and you are poor. In the words of the people of the world, you are elevated, you are rich, but in my eyes, you are very poor. You have nothing. It is all because you are giving importance to amassing wealth and property and for jewelry and for all the garments, the priceless gifts and the relics of the world. But you don't give Priority to God, the kingdom of God, the values of the kingdom of God. Dearly beloved, let us examine ourselves in the presence of God this morning. 
we may be rich in the eyes of the people of this world we may have position in the eyes of the people of this world we may have great titles but amen the name of god is amen which means truth god speaks the truth god says the truth you are beautiful outside but you are wretched you are stinking you are poor in your spiritual life daily beloved shall we examine ourselves this morning we may have plenty we are valuing in money everything is flowing like a water in our families but do we think about the poor do we think about jesus who was born as a poor baby in a manger in a very despicable situation in a stinking cattle shed why did he come over there it is to seek you and to me to give you life to give me life in abundance he left all the splendor and glory of heaven and has identified himself with a sinful humanity fix your values it is good that we acquire money we want our children to be placed highly placed in the society we want them to be honored it is all good but do we give priority to jesus is jesus the head of the family is jesus the savior and the redeemer of your life and my life fix your values secondly fasten your vesture look at this verse the same uh, verse 13 17 you are wretched pitiful poor and naked you think that you have clothed yourself with costly garments but in my sight you are absolutely naked you have nothing on your body on your soul that is what jesus exhorts the people of god the families of god in laodicea in the year 1965 I studied in a Bishop Eva school. That time it was called high school. I was studying in the 9th standard. I still remember my teacher who taught me a non-detailed uh, story. I have never forgotten. This is deeply embedded in my mind, which I recollect very often. Hans Christian Andersen was the author. And he has given... the title of the book the invisible cloth two rogues have approached a king who was very much fascinated by costly garment they wanted to cheat the king so the two rogues thieves approached the uh, king and asked them for money so that they can weave a lovely cloth cloth that people have never seen beautiful in splendor and in glory and the king was tempted gave lot of money and he gave them one month and a room was assigned to them next to the uh, chamber of the king they brought the looms and they fixed it there and they started working on it after 10 days these uh, two rogues and the thief said to the king the garment is visible only for the intelligent people the fools can never see the garment so on the 10th day he sent one of the cabinet members one of the ministers to go and oversee the work when the minister went there and saw the looms it was empty 
and he was wondering what's happening and the thieves were saying look at the one fourth of the work is over how lovely how beautiful is the cloth this fellow thought if i say no they will brand me as a fool so he said what a lovely garment he came back and reported that matter to the king king was satisfied on the 20th day he again sent another cabinet member another minister he went there and saw empty looms and they were working on the empty looms kadak kadak the sound was going on and he saw and the two thieves said what a lovely garment half of them is finished and the minister looked at it and it was absolutely empty nothing is there so if he say nothing is there he will be branded as a fool and he will be beheaded by the king so he said ah lovely cloth lovely garment you are weaving it do it continue to do it they he encouraged them and finally the king went there when the king went there he was astonished he was surprised nothing was there it was absolutely empty but he remembered the two cabinet members who came and reported everything is fine it looks lovely beautiful priceless so he said oh lovely one beautiful one splendid i have never seen a garment like this before in my life see these two people carried the garment with empty hands they came as if they were carrying a very priceless garment brought it to the king removed all the clothing of the king and uh, they acted as if they were uh, uh, putting on the uh, king the garments and uh, when everything was over the two rogues said you look majestic you look all in splendor and glory of the world now we will take you in a chariot and you will go in procession all over your empire they uh, asked him to board the chariot and they, they were took and uh, people were wondering why the king is coming like this without dress but they were unable to open they were absolutely scared so they said oh king you look uh, beautiful you look very nice you know a lady brought a son and a little i'm sorry a little girl and uh, she saw the king and she giggled and said the king is naked the king is naked she started shouting then only they realized that the king was fooled by these rogues this is a story dearly beloved this is what jesus says to you and to me you think you are clothed with a wonderful cloth but you are absolutely naked spiritually naked and jesus says to the families in laodicea i will give you a garment look at this verse verse uh, 18 so you can become rich and white clothes to wear this is the garment of righteousness this is a garment of purity oh families in laodicea you are exporting garments to the whole of the world but you are naked in your own family you are naked in your own kingdom you are naked in your own society dearly beloved we are sitting in the holy presence of god let us look at ourselves how are we in the presence of god we may be wearing vestments we may be wearing costly clothes but we are naked in the sight of god if jesus is not living in our hearts in our families in our church fix your values fasten your vesture god is ready to give a garment of righteousness a garment of purity pure white cloth jesus 
is willing to offer to you and to me. Thirdly, focus your vision. Focus your vision. You see in the same verse 18, what did he say? Uh, look at the latter part. Put on your eyes so you can see. Use shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes. Ointment you apply on your eyes. He says to the families in Laodicea, you are exporting to the whole world eye ointment and many are getting sight. But unfortunately, pitiably, you are blind in my sight. You don't know the values. You are not foresighted. You have celebrated Christmas, but I am coming in glory. The second coming is very near. I am knocking at the door. I have come to the door. And any moment I will come with all the angels and the archangels. You are blind. You are unable to see. You have not prepared yourself to participate in the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a despicable situation. What a desperate situation in which the families were living in Laodicea. Dearly beloved, how are we? How are our values? How is your vesture? How is your vision? Is it focused on Jesus? You know, Jesus says to the people in Laodicea, well, look at verse uh, 16. You are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. I am about to spit you out of my mouth. Laodicea is situated on a highway, in an intersection, in a cross section, six miles away from uh, Laodicea, there was a town called Hierapolis, and it is known for hot springs, springs where hot water flowed, and on the other side, ten miles away, was a town called Colossae and in that particular town the springs were there they were cold and uh, Laodicea gets water from Hierapolis and from Colossae through the aqueduct a uh, water flows through the aqueduct the hot water when it comes to Laodicea becomes lukewarm and the cold water which comes from Colossae is lukewarm, neither cold nor hot. See, we can drink tea only, it, only when it is piping hot, it will be tasty. When we eat ice cream, one, only when it is chilled in the refrigerator, it is delicious. But here, the people of God are lukewarm. You know, the terrific statement of Jesus is in uh, verse uh, 14, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. I will spew you out. I will vomit you because it is nauseating. It is not pleasant. Your life is ugly. Your life is miserable. I will spit you out. I will spew you out. Dearly beloved, let us humble ourselves in the holy presence of God this morning. Jesus says, you should be put on fire. Look at verse 18. 
I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Gold refined in the fire. You are rich. You are famous. You are powerful. But buy from me the gold. It is all because the gold is thrown into the fire and it is refined and it has come with absolute purity. You make yourself pure in the sight of God. Coleman Hunt is a world famous artist. He has drawn a picture and he has given that picture the title The Light of the World. The Light of the World. It is displayed in St. Paul's Cathedral in London. It's a lovely, beautiful picture. And you have all seen that picture and some of you may have it hanging in the walls of our homes. It is the picture of Jesus having a lantern in his left hand, standing in front of a door, shrubs all over and knocking at the door. And that picture, he has given a lovely title, The Light of the World. Dearly beloved, the critics all gathered and uh, they were examining the picture. They all were standing in awe and in amazement. They were startled by the beauty of the picture. Everyone appreciated Holman Hunt. But there was one man who said to Holman Hunt, Mr. Hunt, you have done a terrible mistake. You have done a blunder. Holman Hunt was shocked. How much I have labored, how much I have worked, how much time I have spent, how much energy I have spent to draw this picture. What is my mistake? What have I done? Tell me. You know, the critics say, look at the door. The handle is not there. You have forgotten to uh, portray the handle on the door. Holman Hunt just smiled at him, just laughed at him. You know what he said? The handle is inside of the door. The handle is inside of the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and listens to me and open the door, I will enter in and I will eat with him. The door is inside for the owner to open it. That is why I have not drawn the handle on the outside of the door. Dearly beloved, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Jesus is knocking at the door of your family. Are you willing to open it? You know, every word in the Bible has depth of meaning, shades of meaning, lovely meaning. In the original language, you look at this verse. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him. I will eat with him. That is what the NIV says. That is what the translation says. You know, though, in the original language, it says, I will sup with him. I will eat supper with him. Why did he say that? in the original language. It is all because breakfast, we get up and prepare and hastily we go to the work and uh, grab some uh, loaves of bread and eat and go away. When we go to the workshop or the factory or the office, we have little time for lunch. We grab the lunch and eat it and go away. When we come back in the morning, in the evening, we are all tired, but we freshen ourselves, sit in the dining table. There is an elaborate course of lunch. Family members are sitting around. They talk to each other. They converse with each other. 
they share the experiences of the day with one another, they rejoice, they giggle, they laugh, they embrace, and they eat the delicious meal. That is called supper. And that is what Jesus says. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will enter in. I will have supper with you. I will have an intimate fellowship with you. I'll embrace you. I'll be with you. I will grant you forgiveness. I will give you salvation. I will give you eternal life. You will live with me forever and ever. When the Son of Man comes in glory, we will all be together rejoicing in the kingdom of God. You will be ruling and reigning in the kingdom of God. That is what Jesus says. How beautifully Jesus closes this passage. Look at this verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. I am sitting with my father on his throne equal to my father. In the same way, when you come victorious, when you come overcome the flesh of this world, you will come with me and you will sit next to me. The word that is used there is not a single chair where the king sits. It is a couch. Two people can sit. And Jesus says, when you come to my kingdom, you will sit along with me. And you will rule with me. You will reign with me. What a wonderful privilege and a blessing Jesus gives to you and to me, unworthy people. We are going to sit with Jesus, rule with him. May the Lord grant this blessing to all of us. Let us look to God in prayer. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, you are a glorious God. You are a beautiful God. You are a wonderful God. You are a righteous God. But you have left all splendor and glory. You were born as a baby in a manger just for us. You have spoken to us this morning. You have pointed out how we have lopsided values, how we are naked in your presence, how we are blind and farsighted about the future. We thank you, O oh God, that you are knocking at our door. Help us, O oh Holy Spirit, to open our hearts. We ask you, we plead with you to enter into our hearts, to reign with us, rule with us. Maybe at the end of the day, when you appear in glory, find you and be with you and enjoy your presence and blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under his Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement.
morning everyone on behalf of st john's family we thank reverend david kuzaiya for accepting our invitation and sharing god's message with, with us thank you aya and thank you ama on 31 12 2020 we will be having watch night holy communion service at 11:30 pm our beloved bishop has consented to come for the service on 11 2021 holy communion service at 8 am 31 2021 holy communion service at 8 am and 6:15 pm to attend these worship services kindly enroll your names when it is requested through whatsapp groups new year special thank offertory covers are available kindly collect your covers and offer it on new year service our church member mrs mary batma pandurangan mother of mr mohan she is 98 years and she she going to be with the lord last week kindly pray for the bereaved families our trichy ranjo diocese 37th diocesan council will be held on 14 15 16th january 2021 in bishopa college kindly pray for the council proceedings birthdays during this week 27th december ruben taremi mr donald joshua mrs wasanta noble 29th december mr m allen jamey mr john wesley mr christina liza yanaraj 30th december dr g jackwin sampol ms jessi manoharan 31st december dr ayavan christopher madhuram mrs pushpa ji michael mr gordon mohan 1st january 2021 mr paul navaratnarajan mrs pramila mr a babu chandar 2nd january baby ai theola blessi mr daniel c mrs jasmine hana haran wedding anniversaries 27th december dr s sundar manoharan and mrs sheba manoharan mr marvin joshua and mrs carolyn joshua mr c stephen krubaharan and mrs shantini mr alex ruben and mrs astina angel brown dr edwin brown and mrs iron e brown mr charles peniel and mrs lalita peniel mr charles sundaram and mrs mrudula Mr H Alfred and Mrs Tamina Alfred Mr D Herbert and Mrs Babita Mr Anand David and Mrs Anita 28th December Mr David Rajan and Mrs Esther Jabarani Mr P Devaraj and Mrs Ponjaya Dr Kingsley Jabakumar and Dr Ranjani Jabakumar 29th December Mr Joshua Lazarus and Mrs Nancy Perlin Mr Simeon William and Mrs Angela Gracie Mr Paul Samuel Wasant Kumar and Mrs Helena Susan Mr G Ernest Raj and Mrs Shanta Ernest Raj Reverend Dr Daniel Vincent and Mrs Jan C Vincent Dr Sandeep Albert and Dr Leenu Al- Joseph Albert Dr Arun Emmanuel and Dr Catherine Emmanuel 30th December Mr R Joseph Arul Kumar and Mrs B Janet Mr M Noble Morrison and Mrs G Jasmine Ponmaler Mr Bernard De Cruz and Mrs Santa De Cruz 2nd January Mr Cedric Reed and Mrs Winsome Reed on behalf of St John's family we wish them many more blessed years in our church a bible quest was con- uh, conducted and we have uh, our winners three of them received on christmas day and today Uh, Mr Jebraj and family is here and they won the second prize in this bible quest i request the family to come forward and receive the gift from the pastor mr jebraj and family
almighty god you are the head of the church you are leading our church with your wisdom and guidance we thank you for all the blessings you shower on our diocese on our churches on our pastors lord as we are going to conduct 37th diocesan council next month or you pour us your wisdom through holy spirit to all the officers of the diocese we need your guidance in each and every step we take lord help us to select the leaders and committee members for the betterment and for the growth of the diocese and the churches but also we need your guidance in making plans for the next three years lord whatever we speak whatever we plan whatever we decide but all that be for the glory of your name we submit our bishop aya clerical secretary lay secretary treasurer dcc chairman in your mighty presence that all they do be be glory to your name that they bring glory to your name lord we submit this diocese and council in your mighty hands you be with us you guide us and lead us in jesus name we pray amen of a trick him from church hymnal 146 when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed church hymnal hymn number 146 
loving heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful sunday morning you bless our offerings so that it may be used for your benefits in jesus precious name we ask we also remember at this time our beloved ones who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries your grace and mercy has brought them into the new year we thank you for the same you are with them throughout the years and your blessings must also follow and guide them and lead them and protect them and give them all the provisions and the blessings throughout the years to come in jesus precious name we ask amen spirit let us pray lord have mercy upon us christ have mercy upon us lord have mercy upon us shall we pray together our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory for heaven and ever amen o god who is the author of peace and lover of concord in whose knowledge of eternal life stands whose service is perfect freedom defend us your humble servants from all assaults of evil that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of jesus christ our lord amen the collect for grace o lord our refuge almighty and everlasting god who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin neither run into any kind of danger but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance to do always that which is righteous in your sight through jesus christ our lord amen eternal god our creator who set us to live in families we commend to your care all the homes where your people live fill them with the faith virtue knowledge moderation patience and godliness not together in enduring affections those who have become one in marriage let children and parents have full respect for one another and light the fire of kindliness among us all that we may show affection and warmth through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen shall we all pray the thanksgiving prayer together god of all mercies we your unworthy servants give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people we bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life but above all for your boundless love in the redemption of the world by our lord jesus christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory and we ask you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through jesus christ our redeemer to whom with you and the holy spirit be all honor and glory now and forever amen Almighty God 
who has given us grace at this time at one accord to make our common supplication to you and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name you will grant their request fulfill now o lord the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting amen the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and him from songs of praise 226 anywhere with jesus i can safely go anywhere he leads me in this world below songs of praise 226 
Almighty God and our loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege we have heard this morning to come to your holy sanctuary to be in the presence of God of power and might. We thank you, O God, that we could open up our hearts and pour our desires from you. Father God, we do commend everyone who attended this worship. May they be younger or older. We seek and beseech your blessings upon all of them. We do commend all the pastors, the committee members, into your loving care, pour out your blessings upon them. Even as we go out into this world, may we rejoice that you have brought us to the end of the year 2020. In spite of all the hardships and the sufferings we faced, we do remember the people who are in distress, who are lonely, who are in need, Envelop them with your grace and mercy. Bless them, O oh Father. Give us the privilege of entering into another year with your goodness, with your grace, with your benediction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace.